Hello, I'm Mayor Mike Higgins, and I'm here waiting for the start of the Garden Walk. It's a fundraiser that the CIC puts on every year for the Mook, our museum. The historical museum is a true gem of Lincoln Park, and anytime we can, anytime you get a chance to come by on a Wednesday or Saturday, come by and see it. For the Garden Walk, it's a very special event. You can come here, pick up a map, drive around town, and you'll see the greatest gardens we have. And you're even going to find a couple of surprises you didn't know are in Lincoln Park. Come on out and get a map. Thank you. Hi there. <laughs> Good. Thank you, Mike. I'd also like to thank the Community Improvement Commission for putting on this Garden Walk 2023. Our first stop will be 990 Emmons, a beautiful home. Our second stop will be Annette with the Garden Club, and she will introduce the Blum Rosen Memorial Garden. So I explain about the whole garden tour too, and this. Hi Lincoln Park, it's nice to come and speak with you today. I'm Annette, 
and I'm with the Lincoln Park Garden Club, and today we're celebrating the 2023 Lincoln Park Garden Walk, and this is put on by the Lincoln Park Improvement Commission, and we do different things in the city, like the awards for Halloween, Christmas, uh, we do a couple park cleanups every year, so um, stop being a keyboard warrior and come out and volunteer with us. You'll love it. You make friends and you're doing something positive for the city that you live in. So I want to start here today. We're at the Bloom Rosen Memorial Rose Garden and this is the park that I garden. And Don is showing you the last quadrant that really has hardly been touched at all. I did make an attempt last fall, but I'm just showing this to you to give you an idea that this is what the garden pretty much looked like when I started working um, more often about five years ago. Um, just to remind everyone, this garden was put in about 1983, and in the last 20 years it had become, um, it hadn't been um, weeded or taken care of, it was fell into disrepair. So the last few years, myself and a few other volunteers have come and worked on it. And we do have a senior, Teresa, who is the main reason that this garden probably even exists today because she definitely was a huge part of trying to even keep the weeds at bay. So thanks, Teresa. So we're going to come over to this quadrant. We have a nice berry tree. What we're trying to do here is to bring food for the animals, birds, insects in the garden. Um, the saying is the more diverse plants you have, the more bugs you will get, which means the more birds you will get because they're coming to find food in your garden. So one of the things that's really good about this garden, although they wouldn't have thought about this 45 years ago, is that um, the trees have gotten much bigger and there's really not a lot of the garden that gets intense all day sun because we don't have a water source here. So that's what probably is one of the things that helps this garden to be possible because it's getting, um, every quadrant gets some shade. So you can see here that the plants that we've selected are all shade plants, a big diverse um, of different castas, green and white stripes, green, different colors, that they don't need a lot of sun. Some new things that we put in, my sister was nice enough to buy me some ferns on clearance, so I'm putting some ferns in. That's something new for me. And this is also more sunny, but still some shade, and we have a, um, now I'm gonna forget what it's called, but uh, this bush here, and then it's got some different hostas again, different types of hostas that we're using. And then what's new are these plants here, which are like a short grass. They probably won't get too much taller, maybe about to here. But trying to just fill this area in with plants that will live under those conditions. Still having a lot of problems. We have a lot of roses in this garden. I'm not a rose caretaker. I don't have them at home. Really looking for someone that would just even come and care for the roses would be a good contribution to this garden. And remember, it's called the Bloom Rosen Memorial Rose Garden. So there's a lot in here. Some that probably need to be removed. But we need someone that can come and give good care just to the roses. So if that's something um, you think you might be interested in, you can find me. Okay, so we have a butterfly bush here, and it's re the ring of different kinds of lilies. And we've got these dark colored ones blooming right now. We've got a, a wigalia, if that's how you say it. I'm not sure if that's how. This here, and this is probably its second year. And I want to remind those watching this of how much drought we had last year. So everything survived. So just that things survived the summer last year without being watered by anyone um, is, a, is a miracle to me. And I'm real proud of all the plants in here. So then we come over to this quadrant. 
This quadrant was put in in 2019 by the Green Club at the Lincoln Park High School. We haven't been able to partner with them again. Um, we had COVID and all that, so we would like to come back to them. But they put this in. A lot of this yarrow and that is finished here. So we've got some empty space there. But you're going to notice that this is the quadrant that gets the most pollinators. Um, these plants in here are Michigan drought resistant native flowers. We've got milkweed for the monarchs, cone flowers. And it's kind of in getting out of its summer phase and getting ready to bloom those fall flowers. And this is a quadrant. This is probably one of the spots that gets a lot of sun in the front here. This is probably about four years old and it's pretty densely and nicely planted. Right now we've got coneflower and flax in bloom. Um, probably in September we'll have these sedums and the uh, mums, chrysanthemums, and these sedums are huge pollinators. There'll be bees and flies and whatever all over them. And that's what we're trying to do here besides a place of respite and beauty for guests that come to the concerts, rent the halls and that. But we also want to be um, giving back to nature. These are two plants that I think are some of the coolest that we have here is this bush with the pink berries. I've never seen anything quite like that. Um, that's probably the third, I think that might be the fourth year for that bush. It's gonna get quite large. Um, when you're working in a public garden like this, you have to think a lot bigger than you do at home because you need bigger plants. We've got Russian sage here. And again, a similar type of bush. This is probably three years old. These have white berries, which again, I think is different than other bushes that I've seen. And again, here we have a mostly shady area because of the lilac bush and the um, trumpet plant, which is extremely, extremely invasive. It's great here, and we do get a lot of hummingbirds, but I would not recommend you planting that at home. It's very invasive. It's a beautiful specimen here, but um, I certainly would never plant it. So we've got a lot of hookera and some different shade types of plants that um, fill in this area. And we've got the hostas are blooming. And then this is the newest area that we started in. This is a lot of work because it has been overgrown for decades now. Um, Lily of the Valley also is very invasive. So we've just started clearing it out and how I do it. I am not a master gardener, I have no education, formal education in this, but what I just do is I weed and then I put a plant in because that plant will probably be stronger and take over. That's just the way I, I can do it. So again, you see an assortment of hostas, hookahs, and then we have a grass put in here to try to um, bring some movement to the space. So. I want to thank you if you watched through that today and if you've come to the concerts or you come to the park and look at the garden and if you get any enjoyment out of it, that really makes me get up at 7 o'clock in the morning or whatever to come here and work. I see lots of butterflies here, surprisingly I don't see one right this moment, um, and dragonflies and all of that means we're going in the right direction here with our garden. There were six um, gardens in this walk this year three public and three private. I want to thank everyone that participated in that and that being positive and doing good things for Lincoln Park. We know we have issues. Let's accentuate the positive. Thank you. We get a little bit of this.
Our fourth stop will be the Christ the Good Shepherd Memorial Garden. <laughs> still small they'll get about that big Son, it didn't make it? That's crazy. Yeah, I get double white. So did those hybrid themselves just uh, No, just I probably planted them. Oh, okay. I, these are all from seed. Wow, pretty, pretty cool. Yeah, look at this, look at this apple tree right here. That's crazy, isn't Man, it? That is look crazy. at how many apples are on that. So that's, uh, you said five years old? Oh, five this years. one here is probably about six or seven. Yeah, I'm guessing six or seven. Mm. And then these right here are about nine.
first There's not very that. many. There's pink, yeah. white, double white, blue, Lots dark blue, blue. Mm -hmm. and double yeah, double white. And blue and white. Yeah. So the width of the shed all the way to the fence, that was my first garden. Okay. And I had a couple peppers. And then it grew. And then it grew. So because he's filming. Oh wow. But I believe it's like a tide pepper. Yeah. Like it, yeah, it definitely looks like another part of the of the world. <laughs> yeah. Isn't that crazy? Our last stop will be at 1539 Chandler, and this is the sixth garden. And it is a garden and koi pond and a butterfly garden. Open and wise come through, which is pretty awesome. <laughs> He's like, what are you doing? I was swimming. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> All right. <laughs> we hope you've enjoyed Garden Walk 2023. See you next year.